their seats. And I want to invite our co-chairs to come up and take our, their seats on the floor. That is our outgoing co-chairs, our continuing co-chairs, and our incoming co-chairs as well. Please do come up and take your seats. And we can give them a round of applause as they do that. So as they come up, ladies and gentlemen, just to let you know that this closing session is going to take a look at contributions and actions that members can take to chart the way forward in making development cooperation more effective. That's our key word, efficiency, effectiveness. Now, there are four parts to the next session. Number one, the presentation of co-chairs' statements. Number two, the handover of co-chairs. Number three, we're going to have an expression of interest for actions, and that will be followed by the formal closing statements by the co-chairs. At this point, ladies and gentlemen, let me call the room to order, please. As we go into the next session, order in the house. Thank you. Our next speaker is His Excellency, Philip Odida. Deputy Permanent Representative of Uganda to the United Nations in New York. He's going to give us a short closing statement representing Uganda as an outgoing co-chair. Over to you, sir. Up to you. Co Distinguished co-chairs, members of the steering committee, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen. I've been asked to give this closing uh, remarks on behalf of the substantive co-chair from Uganda, the Minister of Finance, Honorable Matia Kasaija, who has been unable to attend this session. Before I do that, I thought you would allow me to just um, say in passing some reflections. Among some of the key points coming out of the deliberations of the ECOSOC in the current session and leading on to the HPLF is one, realizing the transformative uh, intent of Agenda 2030 for sustainable development requires more than just efficiencies. Second, the agenda's success requires political will to ensure that sustainable development goals truly benefit the marginalized and systematically excluded. Third, there is a need to re-examine our societies if indeed we are to succeed in leaving no one behind. And finally, in this context, rights-based participation that provides protected spaces for critical segments of society must be ensured across the developing world. This messaging around the call for social inclusion was heard during the opening of the HPLF as well as during the opening of our session yesterday when we heard from Amina Muhammad. And uh, speaker after speaker tends to uh, call for a renewed commitment of member states and the international community to the Sustainable Development Goals enshrined in 2030 agenda. Having said that, ladies and gentlemen, Uganda is honored to have been a co-chair of the Global Partnership for Effective Development Cooperation, together with Germany, Bangladesh, and the non-executive co-chair. It has been a long journey from when we joined the leadership of the committee, fresh from the achievements of Nairobi, to today's SLM, taking place in the wings of the HLPF. We welcome heartily the incoming co-chairs from the DRC and Switzerland. For Uganda, this occasion serves as a point of reflection of where we are in working towards implementing the Sustainable Development Agenda. In this regard, 
we feel that while development cooperation has achieved much, it has yet to achieve more towards its intended objectives. This is reflected in the somber fact that while a proportion of the world's population living in, po in poverty is falling, the numbers of those living at or below poverty lines remains unacceptably high. The development effectiveness agenda has contributed achievements towards better planning and implementation of economic development strategies, but it still has much more ground to cover. In this regard, we recognize and the extension of mutual accountability, which is key to making progress on development effectiveness. Ladies and gentlemen, it will be recalled that in Busan we agreed on the four shared principles of ownership of development priorities, focus on results, inclusive development partnerships, and transparency and accountability. These principles further reiterated in the Nairobi outcome document and the Kampala principles we, uh, we approved yesterday, released yesterday, serve as our essential toolkit Generally, some progress has been made on implementation. In the case of Uganda, we can report that the continuous evolution of our national development planning frameworks, we have been able to register higher quality, inclusive, and results-oriented strategies that are filtering down to the grassroots. We have enhanced multi-stakeholder efforts uh, engagements while recognizing that successful efforts require inclusive and equitable participation of all actors. To this end, we are in the final stages of developing a development cooperation policy that will guide on dialogue between the government, development partners, the private sector, civil society organizations, and address the challenges in the development cooperation landscape. Together with strengthening of the public financial management systems, we have, been, we have seen a strengthening in the quality and use of financial resources and greater accountability and transparency. In addition, we have developed an aid management platform through which reporting by development partners will be a requirement in order to feed information into our annual reports. These policy interventions have placed us in a mode in which we will be in a better position to predict at the national level the quantum of resources for forward planning and set the stage for more focused and coherent dialogue with our partners on enhancing mutual accountability systems. Over the medium term, therefore, further attention will be directed at mobilizing long-term finance in recognition of the fact that investments for sustainable development require what we see as patient capital in f to facilitate inclusive growth, thereby enabling us to truly leave no one behind. Distinguished participants, these achievements lead us to believe that development assistance can be most effective when partners, countries have a way have a say in where it is most needed and on how it should be used. Countries that are accountable, that receive flexible development assistance and that have the most ownership will be best placed to achieve positive outcomes. In this sense, I would like to point out the significance of real partnerships. As echoed in the opening segment of our deliberations yesterday, partnerships is the way to go. Through strong partnerships in which governments together with the international community and other rele relevant stakeholders working together, development effectiveness can be scaled up. We have seen this model work amongst our member countries in the steering committee, in Uganda, in Rwanda, Bangladesh, and other countries. As I draw to a close of my, my remarks, I wish to reiterate some key messaging that the steering committee in its two and a half year engagements have reflected. One is that effectiveness can be a game changer to deliver the SDGs if its values can be embedded 
into the transformative 2030 agenda. Secondly, that the effectiveness agenda is best viewed as an evolving process, as confirmed by the SLM and the Global Partnership's openness to continued adaptation to advance its principles. In conclusion, on behalf of my Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic Development, Honorable Matia Kasaija, I want to take this opportunity to thank the Honorable Co-Chairs for their leadership and tireless efforts in steering the Global Partnership during the last two and a half years. I also want to thank the members of the steering committee as well as the joint support team for their excellent support over the period. Allow me to mention uh, at this point uh, Thomas, Rebecca, Yuko, Anna, Margaret, Paloma, and Rob, and many other working behind the scenes to prepare substantive work of the Global Partnership. Uh, I also wish to acknowledge the hard work at the technical level uh, from the partner countries, all our colleagues, and for my part in particular, Fred, Miriam, and Maris from Uganda who have been working, uh, preparing the substantive work. I wish, to I wish to uh, take this opportunity to welcome the incoming co-chairs, but most particularly Uganda's successor at the African regional level. His Excellency Daniel Mosango, Secretary General, Ministry of Planning and Economic Republic of Congo, Vuzet Bienvenue, and wish the newly constituted steering committee and its members all the best. Together with Switzerland and Your Excellency Ambassador, you, you showed a short while ago the reason why you're actually coming on board as a co as a co-chair. Um, we, together with Switzerland, as in incoming co-chairs, we count on your leadership in pursuing the development effectiveness agenda in a spirit of partnership. Within the global partnership, let us continue working together to make this world a better place in line with the aspirations of the 2030 agenda and leaving no one behind. Uganda, as an outgoing co-chair, remains committed to the global partnership and we remain available to give you any support that may be needed. I thank you. Thank you very, very much for that, Ambassador Odiga. Now, uh, I would like to invite Monowar Ahmed, Secretary, Ministry of Finance of Bangladesh, to present the co-chair statement on behalf of all four GPEDC co-chairs and invite the co-chairs to sign their statement. Over to you, sir. Uh, my fellow co-chairs, distinguished participants, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, assalamu alaikum and good morning. It's my honor to present the co-chair statement on behalf of the GPDC's co-chairs. I would like to start by thanking fellow co-chairs for working together to prepare this statement. We would like to acknowledge that we have been immensely benefited from ideas, from uh, ideas coming from the steering committee and from the deliberations of the HLM for, the, for yesterday and this morning. Ladies and gentlemen, you are here that this is the first HLM of its kind. Well, there is no negotiated outcome. We would like to share this statement as our reflection that will hopefully to be helpful for incoming co-chairs as they assume their leadership role in steering the partnership moving forward. Now, allow me to share a few highlights of our key takeaways. Our deliberations here have shown that effectiveness matters to all of us. 
and it help, helps us to deliver better results on the ground. This SLN, if you recall, those who are working with us was proposed by our ex-honorable finance minister, Mr. A. M. A. Muhid, to have this HLM during this, uh, uh, along with this uh, activities of the UN. So it's happening now. So it's, in our opinion, it has been timely because we are not on track to reach the SDGs. Our deliberations here have shown that we need to not only partner more effectively, but also to focus more on those farthest behind, in line with the spirit of leaving no one behind to attain the SDGs. There is an urgency of making faster progress, as one third of time has already been elapsed to implement SDGs. The inclusiveness of global partnership is our strength. The fact that everyone can join the global partnership on an equal footing enables us to respond better to the needs and priorities of our people. This is the whole of society approach envisaged by the 2030 agenda. As co-chairs, we see the monitoring exercise of the global partnership as a unique tool. It generates evidence for the country level as well as for SDG reviews. And this is vital instrument for mutual accountability. This evidence was reasserted with the record participation of 86 partner countries in the 2018 monitoring round. This proves the value of this exercise and that we need to keep investing in it together. The monitoring will continue to adapt guided by the countries that lead the data collection and the partners' experiences from this effort. We, the coaches, recognize the lack of progress in the unfinished businesses agenda and welcome the proposal to create a work stream to develop a global action plan for actionable areas in time for the third high-level meeting. New initiatives on the use of country system and untying aid should also be addressed with a sense of urgency. We remain concerned about the sinking civic space as indicated by the monitoring evidence. We therefore call on joint actions to analyze the different constants affecting our shared support to civil society to play its full role as development actors in their own right in achieving the SDGs. In Nairobi high-level meeting in 2016, our ambition was to bring the global partnership closer to the SDG implementation. As co-chairs, we can be proud that the past two days have marked a milestone in this regard. We can confidently say that the effectiveness works and that is a cornerstone for achieving the 2030 agenda. We have seen yesterday that living by the effectiveness principles can lead to the better development results. Distinguished participants, let me conclude with a personal reflection. The past two and a half years has been a rewarding journey for Bangladesh. The global partnership has broadened and deepened its rich and we have achieved a significant progress. While we celebrate this as co-chairs, it is by no means our achievement alone. The global partnership is a member-led partnership. The steering committee has been instrumental in designing and delivering on our work program. Countries and partners beyond the committee have engaged actively since 2016 and also throughout our SLM deliberations. We greatly acknowledge the vital institutional support that we receive from the OECD and UNDP in delivering our responsibilities. While Bangladesh will proudly continue its co-chairing role, 
This statement closes a chapter of our leadership that we have shared with Germany and Uganda, who are stepping down. We are thankful to German, Germany and Uganda, uh, German and Uganda leaderships for their support and contributions towards achieving the development effectiveness agenda. We welcome on board both Switzerland and Democratic Republic of Congo as the new co-chairs of GPDC along with the non-executive co-chair. I am glad that this statement captures some of our joint achievements and I see future holds many more promising opportunities to take the global partnership to the next level. We look forward to working closely with our fellow co-chairs from Switzerland, Democratic Republic of Congo and non-executive co-chair to jointly steer the next chapter of the global partnership. So before finally I conclude, let me share one of my personal uh, conviction that we made commitments even for the last one and a half day. And let's promise, let's translate this commitment into actions and from actions to implement it with all the relevant stakeholders and monitor it and continue our journey. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very, very much, uh, Mr. Ahmed, for your insights, your remarks, and also for uh, delivering the statement. I should say, ladies and gentlemen, that you can access the co-chair statement online. It will be available at the following um, website, www.effectivecooperation.org effectivecooperation.org. So if you want to access the statement, you can get it there. We're going into the process now of the signing. And as we do that, ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about being more effective. And there's somebody clearly missing from the table, if we take a look. Can someone tell me what's missing? Women. Women. No gender balance. So, so we challenge ourselves even as we go into the signing that. We need to fix that. So um, we go into the signing and I'll welcome um, our team to bring forward uh, the statements that will be signed. And it is our outgoing chairs and our continuing chairs who will do the signing. Um, and that happens now, Germany. Oh dear. Is the pen working? Now it is working and Germany is signing. It is. Excellent. Can we give them a round of applause? Thank you. followed by Uganda. Thank you very much. A round of applause for Uganda. And Bangladesh. Thank you very much. A round of applause for Bangladesh. And our non-executive co-chair now signed. This is how we do it in Africa. <laughs> Celebration. Um, ladies and gentlemen, before we move forward, can I ask all the co-chairs to please stand up so we can get some, some photographs. And after the session ends, we'll take a few more. But for now, right where you are, if we could get some photos of you standing. Thank you very much. You could, I think, move a little bit closer together. DRC and Switzerland, thank you. Our incoming co-chairs, our continuing co-chairs, and our outgoing co-chairs there. Excellent. Thank you very much. You may take your seats. And now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to hand back to Thomas Gass, uh, uh, the co-chair representing Switzerland, to take over. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Juliet. And I, I think if you hadn't said it, I would have said this, this has to be our commitment. I mean, in the next change of chairs, there has to be one towards more gender balance on the, on the Bureau. So here's the first commitment of the incoming Bureau. Um, I'd, I'd like to 
as I take the floor for the first time in this function, just like to uh, just uh, throw out a strong, strong kudos to the outgoing, uh, to the outgoing co-chair Germany, but also Uganda. Uh, I mean, my constituency, obviously, uh, uh, Germany. You've done so much, also the, the Kampala principles, uh, broadening this. The broadening this community in a more formal way also uh, um, and making sure that that everyone has a formal voice at, the, at this table and, and not just an informal one but also holding the whole partnership to task through a program of action and I think those are things that we don't want to lose as we move forward so thank you uh, Germany thank you Uganda thank you to their teams I know that it's never just one person that does that. Um, and in, in terms of uh, just saying a few words on, on my own behalf, you've, you've heard me just now already. For me, GPEDC needs to still get closer to Agenda 2030, but not just to the agenda itself, but also to the, to the formal monitoring system of Agenda 2030. Uh, Amina Mohammed actually said it yesterday morning. She said, effectiveness is at the core of the 2030 agenda and she expects this to be visible in September and at the HLPF and so let's make sure that that, that really happens um, let's also make sure that our monitoring system which is what what gives strength to this partnership uh, has a stronger uh, an effect on what we actually do uh, so we don't just uh, have mon monitor for monitoring sake, but we monitor so that we change the way we work. We monitor for evidence. We monitor to show that effective development cooperation actually delivers in a stronger way on the on the ambition of, of Agenda 2030. And then uh, finally, let's let's build on this uh, on this variable geometry of of multi-stakeholder uh, for us. Uh, let's engage with, with our friends uh, in, in triangular cooperation, in south-south cooperation. Let's talk uh, in, a, in, a, in a much more open way also about the, the challenges of fragility, the importance of a strong nexus. These are some of the points that, uh, that I want to also put my weight behind. And, and of course, you've already heard me, and you've got to hear me again about data because I think that's key to leaving no one behind. Thank you very much. Thank you, and uh, now it's my privilege to, to, give the, to give the floor, c'est mon privilège de, de passer la It's my privilege to give the floor to uh, Mr. Daniel Mosango, who is going to be part of the bureau, also as co-chair, uh, Mr. Mosango, can you share with us your vision as well for this partnership? Please go ahead. Thank you, Excellency, uh, Mr. Ambassador, distinguished participants, uh, dear uh, Co host, uh, ladies and gentlemen, in your various capacities uh, and excellence, Excellency Mr. Ambassador, ladies and gentlemen, allow me before anything else uh, to tell you on behalf of the Democratic Republic of Congo my sincere thanks for being uh, invited to be a co chair of the GPEDC. The Democratic Republic of Congo would like also to express its deep uh, gratitude uh, to, uh, to the uh, NEPAD, uh, to the various uh, African countries of the Central African region, uh, which have uh, supported our uh, candidacy to this uh, position during the uh, meeting of the regional uh, that uh, uh, regional meeting that was in Kampala in Uganda in uh, March 2019. Uh, let me also uh, seize this opportunity 
to uh, uh, thank warmly uh, Switzerland uh, through His Excellency Mr. Ambassador Th Thomas Gass as a co-chair with the uh, Democratic Republic of Congo. Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, uh, in your various capacities, um, you will remember that during the first uh, high-level meeting of the uh, GPEDC, which uh, was uh, convened in uh, 2014 in Mexico, the representative of developing country, developed countries uh, and of uh, developing countries, as well as uh, all the development actors, uh, recognized that poverty and inequalities uh, remain the uh, main challenge for us today. Based on the report uh, of resulting from the investigation that was led, uh, done in 2018, we uh, knew uh, the goals that we had to meet to uh, fulfill the uh, and, uh, respect the principle of uh, our national ownership uh, to get results uh, uh, with inclusiveness and uh, with uh, transparency and uh, shared accountability for the uh, realization of the ODD. This important uh, monitoring exercise uh, by uh, the uh, countries and their development partners uh, is an opportunity to measure progress made, um, the opportunities that need to be seized, and the challenges uh, that we've met uh, to align uh, their efforts uh, with the uh, efficiency of uh, the ODA. In this vein, uh, you will remember that uh, the information and data collected and analyzed by most of the countries show the various challenges that we need to still meet, in particular those that are linked to uh, aligning up priorities on the priorities of developing countries, the use and the strengthening of national systems, uh, the increase of progress in the areas of transparency and accountability, the use of uh, uh, assessment of uh, weaknesses uh, to caliber uh, programs uh, for the countries, the uh, predictability of uh, assistance and aid at mid on the midterm horizon, the inclusion of new deals in the dialogues uh, with uh, fragile countries and the taking into account uh, of uh, greater involvement uh, uh, in the Agenda 2030 and the Agenda 2063. In order to meet those challenges, uh, we will need uh, to implement measures uh, that foster in particular a de continuous dialogue and inclusive dialogue around the development results, the improvement of uh, governments and the promotion of innovative partnerships with the private sector uh, to uh, s uh, reach the uh, SDGs. The new way of working in order to strengthen synergies between uh, humanitarian actors, uh, 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 development actors, and uh, in the context of uh, conflict resolution to get greater and better results, the strengthening of the statistical apparatus of country, the setting up of uh, acceleration frameworks uh, in order to uh, uh, implement the SDGs, the imp uh, improvement and the use of uh, and collect of data uh, in the area of the Monta, uh, through the strengthening of the capacities in this area for uh, collecting data uh, of uh, high quality and for data analysis uh, so that we can follow up on the progress and assess the impact uh, uh, on the development and the support to actions uh, related to uh, human rights, the uh, women's rights, and to vulnerable groups. Uh, 
it's true that our effort will need to eliminate the bottlenecks uh, that have been identified through uh, concrete actions, uh, through the sharing of knowledge on the various uh, approaches uh, uh, between north and the south, between the uh, among the north and between the south south, and on the triangular level, as well as on the regional level, the promotion of uh, f an environment of favorable and conducive to business uh, so that uh, on the basis of an inclusive and sustainable uh, development. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, allow me to mention here that the Democratic Republic of Congo, uh, as uh, so other countries, uh, 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 has uh, actively contributed to the uh, uh, series of um, investigation that were led on the global partnership that were done in 2014 and 2016 and 2018. Um, a roadmap was uh, created and adopted uh, in 2013, and then it was updated in 2016. In that same context, my country has done a three assessment of uh, fragility of weaknesses based on the five goals of peace, uh, peace uh, building and the strengthening of a new deal for fragile states. So regarding the third cycle of investigation. It was done in a political context that was uh, characterized by the organization of elections uh, beyond the uh, constitutional timetable, uh, the uh, political uh, alternance of power and the uh, peaceful transfer of power. And the results of that investigation show that the, the country has made uh, modest uh, progress uh, and uh, with the weak contribution of partners in terms of providing data, following the waiting attitude uh, uh, relative to the political context. Uh, to illustrate this, uh, you know, the quality of the uh, uh, dialogue between the public sector and the public sector has been uh, assessed to be efficient, uh, uh, even though the, uh, uh, the context for uh, social society is uh, characterized as basic. Uh, regarding uh, accessibility of uh, transparent information regarding cooperation for development, uh, they uh, show a remarkable score of 98%. Uh, the strengthening of uh, the uh, framework for national results uh, is at 70%, even though the quality of the dialogue between the public and the private sector is uh, assessed to be efficient for the government and the trade unions on the one hand, and, uh, and it's undergoing uh, you know, strengthening for the private sector. Uh, regarding uh, mutual accountability for development actors, uh, it is not at all strengthened uh, as long as the uh, 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 gender equality remains a big challenge. Uh, uh, in conclusion, uh, I would like to uh, underscore that the Democratic Republic of Congo shares fully the idea according to which uh, the uh, uh, implementation of the Agenda 2030 requires uh, additional efforts uh, and urgent action. It is in that context that my country is committed with the support of its partner, including UNDP, uh, to prioritize and localize the SDGs uh, 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 and well define its national measures uh, according to the 38 uh, targets uh, that have been prioritized and uh, supported by 58 indicators. The, uh, 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 ex that exercise has been expanded uh, after that through the production of uh, mapping of the uh, map indicators, uh, including uh, referential values as well as annual targets for the next five years. Uh, our uh, national, uh, national Plan for Strategic Development uh, for 2019 to 2023 is being um, approved as we speak and uh, and will support mostly uh, the uh, access that have to do with the SDGs. This is why 
we need in favor of uh, an involvement of all so that we can set up a, a framework that will allow to accelerate the implementation of SDGs through uh, uh, the implementation of national and regional plans uh, and also uh, have the signing of a collective framework for accountability uh, that will foster a more efficient partnership guaranteeing a greater transparency. I thank you for your kind attention. Thank you, thank you very much, Mr. Secretary General uh, Mosango. Uh, of a number of changes in the steering committee. Um, you, uh, we, will, we will welcome the Ivory Coast, nominated by the African countries. Bienvenue. Uh, welcome. We waiting for a second nomination, a third nomination, because we, we, already, we also have the DRC, a third nomination from the Africa uh, group. Then we welcome Colombia, uh, replacing Mexico, and a big thanks also to, to the Mexican team for all the energy you've put into the GPDC. Big welcome, warm welcome to Colombia. Then uh, we welcome, should I say again, Korea <laughs> to come uh, and, and take the, the group, take forward the group uh, on behalf of Japan also. And a big thanks to Japan. Um, we welcome the Inter-American Development Bank, replacing the World Bank in the, uh, in the Multilateral Development Bank group. Uh, welcome. Um, Germany will stay on as ex officio member of the steering committee. We thank you for doing that and for continuing to bring your energy to the, to the group. Huh? Thank you. And, and we'd like to give a special thanks also to the Aga, Found, uh, Aga Khan Foundation that is leaving uh, the steering committee and we're waiting for another foundation to replace uh, the Aga Khan Foundation as representative of the foundation. So thank you, Aga Khan Foundation. I don't know thank you. Um, now I have the honor to give the floor to a number of uh, steering committee members and, and, uh, and, and representatives of constituencies for very specific commitments and engagements that they promised to, to contribute moving forward uh, for short statements. Um, so we will start uh, with the Deputy Assistant Minister, His Excellency Susumu Kuwahara, uh, International Cooperation Bureau in the Japanese Ministry of Foreign Affairs, to take the floor and highlight the linkages the global partnership could make to the work of the G20 on development cooperation. Um, Mr. Kuwahara? Oh, there you are. Okay. Thank you. And first of all, Japan would like to express our appreciation for this fruitful and insightful discussion we have had during these two days. Japan, as a member of the steering committee from August 2015 to July 2019, is extremely honored to be able to witness and contribute to several significant achievements of this very unique multi-stakeholder partnership. Now, um, by way of informing global follow-up and as the presidency of G20, Japan would like to share the G20's contribution to development effectiveness, in particular the Osaka update on the G20 action plan on the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, which Development Working Group updates each year. This document underscores the G20 collective and concrete action towards the implementation of the 23rd Agenda to ensure no one is left behind, <coughs> in which the priority areas include health and education, quality infrastructure, innovation, gender equality, climate change, and marine environment. The annex of the Osaka update shows the outcome of the second round of the voluntary peer learning mechanism, where awareness, ownership, 
and engagement are featured as one of the G20's policy and institutional challenges. Furthermore, as emphasized in the G20 Initiative on Human Capital Investment, endorsed in Osaka, the G20 supports equal access to quality education based on evidence by proving the availability and following up of inclusive, accessible, quality, timely evaluations and measurements in order to address the learning crisis. Following the 2019 G20 summit held two weeks ago in Osaka, we are going to present the G20's collective actions in support of implementation of the 2030 Agenda as a global framework at the HLPF in New York. It is meaningful that the discussions at the G20 and the GPDC are linked and reflect each other in order to promote effectiveness agenda at all levels towards achieving the 2030 Agenda. Japan would like to call for collective efforts from our fellow G20 members here participating to the SLM to continuously support the effectiveness agenda within the arena of the G20. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kuara, and thank you, Japan, for holding up the effectiveness agenda so strongly. Um, next, I have on my list um, Madam Hyun Jo Oh, Director General of Development Cooperation Bureau at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Republic of Korea, to highlight her vision for the road ahead for the global partnership and how the Republic uh, of Korea will support it. Madam Oh, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair, and uh, distinguished participants. It, is, it was truly a meaningful and constructive weekend. <laughs> the discussions we have had for the past one and a half days was an occasion to generate a great deal of political momentum for the future of the GPDC and to reconfirm the validity of the GPDC as a platform for all stakeholders for the development cooperation. On this achievement, I would like to thank the outgoing uh, co-chairs for their leadership and all e uh, efforts exerted. And I would like to congratulate incoming co-chairs on the assumption of an important role they will take. And we will render our full support for their work. As the host country of the uh, fourth high-level forum on aid effectiveness held in Busan, in 2011, Korea has placed a great importance and weight on furthering, uh, further advancing the key principles of the GPDC. Reconfirming its commitment to the GPDC, Korea will join the steering committee again from August this year, and we look forward to working closely with other Asian member states to bring, ab to bring about meaningful results. During the discussions we have had over the weekend, I think we confirmed that it is high time for the GPDC to translate the Pusan principles into tangible achievements. I believe there are three tasks that the GPDC need to tackle to realize this. First, to better contribute to the SDGs. We can bring in the main topics of discussion of the SDGs and develop the discussions into relevant norms and guidelines through the multi-stakeholder process of the GPDC. And we can utilize our monitoring system as a tool to check implementation of norms and guidelines. Second, the GPDC should be equipped with the statistical tools and sufficient data to keep track of implementation. In this regard, Korea hopes for greater input and contributions by the joint support team, as well as donor countries. Moreover, support for this uh, statistical capacity of recipient countries should be strengthened. This will allow for better collection and management of domestic data required for a most, more accurate assessment of development effectiveness on the ground. Third, the representativeness and effectiveness of a steering committee needs to be further strengthened. The greatest merit of the GPDC is its optimum composition. It is not an exclusive forum among advanced donor countries. 
And it is an uh, open platform where not only nation states, but a whole range of other actors, such as international organizations, civil society, take part on an equal footing. Korea believes this ideal format is conducive to generating concrete results. And yet, there is still room for further improvement. The steering committee can be more practical and efficient when each member strengthens its communication with its constituent uh, members. The GPDs should not be complacent with its status of a symbolic multi-stakeholder forum. It should move beyond a set of principles to action-oriented framework that can yield achievements in line with the implementation of the Agenda 2030. For this, Korea have played and will play a meaningful role in its endeavors. As part of these efforts, Korea has been hosting the Busan Global Partnership Forum annually to, uh, since 2014 and biannually since 2017. And the fifth Busan Forum will be held on December 4th to 5th this year in Seoul. And taking this opportunity, Korea plans to foster close links between the Busan Forum and GPDC 2019 to 2020 program of work, which is to be adopted at the steering committee later this year. Korea very much hopes to have the pleasure of um, welcoming you all in, in Korea. Formal invitations will be sent out in September via diplomatic channels and through individual uh, contacts. So thank you again, and I hope to see you all in Seoul in December. Thank you, Madam Oh. Thank you for the invite. And uh, I know that within the steering committee, there are already discussions to see whether we can hold the steering committee meeting close to that, to that meeting uh, in Busan. Um, I, I have on my list uh, uh, Colombia, uh, Madam Angela Ospina de Nicoles. Can I give you the floor again? Dear Ambassador Thomas Gass, again, thank you very much to Mexico's delegation. Thank you very much for uh, giving us your uh, host. We're willing to work and hope to uh, work towards uh, the same guidelines that you've uh, set for us. It's an honor for Colombia to receive the nomination to become part of the steering committee of the GPEDC and APC Colombia reiterates its commitment and constant work to uh, achieve the goals of this uh, partnership. Those who spoke before me gave us specific guidelines as to what they will do. So we will join these purposes, especially so that cooperation is efficient. The Global South has a big responsibility, but we have a lot to contribute. This is part of the commitment we like to bring to this committee. Finally, we've mentioned often the uh, collection of, informa the, of data information. This isn't just about accountability, but it's also about monitoring. What are we doing? How are we doing? What do we need to do? And where will we go from now on? Thank you very much. Thank you very much and welcome to these uh, strong leaders, uh, uh, strong women leaders. Welcome. Next on my list. Uh, I would like to give the floor to Mr. Sri Krishna Nepal, Joint Secretary, Minister of Ministry of Finance of Nepal, asking him to speak uh, on how, what kind of actions partner countries would like to take in, uh, going forward within the GPDC. Thank you, Chair. Mr. Nepal. Thank you, Chair. First of all, I would like to extend. Uh, the congratulations to you for being appointed as a co-chair of GPDC. It has been really a very fruitful weekend. Uh, uh, the focus discussions uh, of one and a half days, it has really re-justified the relevancy of GPDC mechanism. Uh, co-chairs of the GPDC, distinguished colleagues, all protocols observed. Thank you for the opportunity to speak in this closing session. 
in our capacity as GPDC steering committee member, Nepal together with Bangladesh held a side event on Friday. Taking stock of effectiveness principles at country level, allow me to share some of the actions from those discussions. First, for LDCs and other recipient countries, the quality of aid always matters. There is still more to do in using country systems, which reinforces ownership. The original commitments are very important and have real implications on the ground. Governments should continue to strengthen country systems. At the same time, development partners should rely on these systems and demonstrate that they are walking the talk. Second, the development cooperation land landscape in, in partner countries is changing rapidly. Countries are blessed by choices, but are also challenged to manage an increasingly complex development finance and cooperation landscape. While we must not lose focus on the original commitments, the GPDC also must e evolve so that the effectiveness principles can be embedded in modalities beyond ODA. Third, speakers at our events endorsed the importance of a whole of society approach and the engagement of all development actors. We understand that more needs to be done at country level to create an enabling environment and efforts are already underway in this regard. GPDC must continue as a knowledge platform on how all actors can collaborate effectively. Fourth, speakers at our side event strongly validated the value of the Global Partnership Monitoring Survey as a source of evidence, as a way to gather evidence at country level, and as a basis for dialogue. But we must do more to ensure complete and reliable reporting and at the results are translated into action, potentially by using monitoring results to establish clear targets and action plans to be implemented between monitoring cycles. Fifth and final, at the country level, the effectiveness principles remain very relevant. They have been localized and embedded into national policies, institutional mechanisms, and core development processes. There is most, much experience to be shared. GPDC must continue as a platform for knowledge sharing on the, how the principles are being translated into action at the country level. To conclude, Nepal remains committed to work on effectiveness principles, being part of global partnership for effective developments. Thank you once again for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Depa. On executive stakeholders, what are the actions you will deliver going forward? Your Excellencies, uh, co-chairs, and members of the Global Partnership, distinguished participants to the senior level meeting, good afternoon. In behalf of the Civil Society Organization Partnership for Development Effectiveness, or CPDE, we would like to praise the efforts to hold a senior level meeting of the GPEDC back to back the HLPF. We sincerely thank those that have worked hard for this to happen and all the delegates who have traveled far to contribute to the SLM. I think, we think, by our participation, we have reaffirmed the importance of this community. Uh, by our participation, we have reaffirmed the importance of the global partnership. We see this meeting as a key milestone towards the celebration of the Busan Agreement that will take place in two years' time. From this meeting, we take away the conviction that the deliberations endorsed together in 2011 were visionary and forward, and were forward-looking. Our conversations here in New York, inside and outside the hall, have just confirmed that without transparency, without country leadership, and without people's participation on development processes, the ambitions of the 2030 Agenda will not be met. With this reality in mind, the civil society organization community will continue to fully support the endeavors of the global partnership and will outreach to other platforms to share the lessons and the opportunity coming from the effectiveness agenda. Bearing in mind that everybody should be living 
Leading by improving their own record on effectiveness, we highlight at least three areas where the expertise and knowledge are readily available. One, we would like to call on the development partners to deliver on the realization of the CSO Enabling Environment Commitments. It is in fact possible to initiate a multi-stakeholder work stream to implement country-level initiatives to realize the Nairobi commitment on reversing shrinking space and closing civic space. In this regard, we invite all GPEDC constituencies to commit to the Belgrade call to action on reversing shrinking civic spaces, including the protection of human rights defenders. <laughs> Two, adopting the monitoring framework for the fourth monitoring round to countries facing conditions of conflict and or fragility and South-South cooperation by safeguarding the integrity of the monitoring framework endorsed in Busan. Three, last, building upon the Kampala principles to develop a monitoring indicator for the effective private engagement in development cooperation, including an assessment of blended finance and other leveraging arrangements consistent with development effectiveness principles, labor and other international human rights standards, these principles should contribute to putting people at the center of effective development cooperation. We join the others that have previously made this commitment to transform our commitments to action. If governments can aim to leave no one behind, then it should not be difficult for all of us to pledge to leave no commitment behind. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, and uh, <laughs> we wait to be rocked, we, we're ready to be rocked. Um, I still have two statements uh, uh, from the floor here, and then I'd like to uh, pass it back to uh, our very able MC. Um, first, and a short statement first from Mr. Moheldin on behalf of the World Bank Group uh, is coming in. And thank you for being with us also for these two days and engaging strongly with this partnership. All right, thank you so much, Ambassador Gash. Always um, great for the World Bank Group to be part of uh, very useful um, and effective initiatives to help us achieving the ambitious goals of sustainable development. So on behalf of the World Bank Group, and given that we are going to be passing the uh, baton to um, our colleagues in the IDBs, I would say on behalf of the MDBs as well, who have been uh, working hard and effectively with our team, uh, let me uh, name them, the African Development Bank, the Asian Development Bank, the Caribbean Development Bank, the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development, the IDB Group, uh, IFAD, Islamic Development Bank, and ourselves we are very grateful for the opportunity to serve and support the work. Um, we are happy that the work that we have been doing since the very beginning is completely in line with the Addis Ababa Action Agenda. As you know, the MDBs are committed to scaling up financing for development uh, to achieve the SDGs based on these uh, principles. I uh, worked hard together, not just uh, since 2015, but even um, a couple of years before that, we started the collaboration 
to get ourselves into a full aligned uh, manner to achieve the SDGs at the country uh, level. Happy as well that the Kampala principles, the five principles, are consistent with how the MDBs have been collectively pursuing the partnerships. And uh, based on that, um, we're happy to uh, emphasize that we will continue to play a critical role in supporting the efforts of uh, the member countries to translate the SDGs into uh, practical country level operations. Uh, specifically, uh, we are committed to stepping up our efforts to better utilize the uh, respective business models in the field, uh, to boost the multiplier effect of financing, to increase technical assistance, especially in the areas related to data. And uh, unfortunately, and it's good that you are hosting the data forum uh, uh, next year in Switzerland to have an assessment of the efforts toward getting uh, better data, but unfortunately so far we didn't achieve what we wish to see um, of better indicators for um, uh, development that uh, to help us monitoring and improving governance and accountability. So I hope that the collaboration will be better in the future. And to ensure that knowledge is shared and to provide innovative solutions to multidimensional development um, um, uh, uh, progress. Now, I'm, I'm happy as well to share this um, uh, pamphlet, which is available um, in the room, um, which have been um, collectively prepared by specific examples of different areas um, of work, including in areas related to climate change, energy, financial inclusion, gender equality, infrastructure and industrial development, services, small and medium-sized enterprises, and of course, supporting jobs, jobs and jobs, whatever and whenever we can. This is a very pressing need um, for us. Having said that, we'll continue uh, our support uh, to uh, the MDB's group and to the new fantastic uh, team leading the work for better coordination and for better effectiveness um, uh, of development going forward, and as I mentioned yesterday, if uh, it doesn't exist in the budget, it doesn't exist, period. So I'm happy to tell my team working in this that the budget items supporting their engagement is still very much there and will continue as we started with full commitment. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well back. And now I'd like to give the floor to Susanna Mohead. She's been at the helm of DAC for a short time, but already has put so much energy and, and is really holding up the development effectiveness uh, agenda. And thank you also for being here the, these two days. Um, you have the floor for some final words from your side. Um, I'm very struck that we're at precisely the midpoint between Busan and 2030. And I think as uh, Freddie Mercury would have said, don't stop me now. Uh, it's, it's easy and I would argue lazy to say that development effectiveness is past its sell-by date and that we need to move on to other things. I think our thinking needs to be refreshed, but development effectiveness and indeed the GPEDC is a global public good and we need to protect and preserve and modernize it. And development ineffectiveness is a global public bad. But we can't afford to stand still. Time is marching on, and the next phase of development effectiveness must grip today's challenges if we are going to deliver the SDGs. There are more players. Development is more complex. There's more fragility. There's less mutual accountability. And climate change is layered on top of this, to name but a few of the challenges. And we don't have enough resources. And that is why we need development effectiveness. Now, ODA will remain critical, but it will never be enough. We need to have a much larger pie, and I would argue, change the recipe. We need more private sector finance, more blended finance, more innovation, 
more risk, more learning, more appetite for change. So what will the DAC do to contribute to this? First of all, we will champion modernization of development effectiveness, beginning by implementing the Kampala principles, but also by continuing to expand our dialogue with civil society organizations and others. We're going to strengthen and diversify our partnerships with those countries in receipt of official development assistance, with other donors, the Indias, the Chinas, Latin American partners, with civil society organizations across the world, and with the private sector, local and global. Thirdly, we're going to monitor and hold our DAC members to account and strive to, pr to promote mutual accountability. We cannot do this on our own. Fourthly, we'll redouble our efforts to focus on impact and results. And when we're not getting it right on the basis of evidence, we will change direction and what we do. Fifthly, I commit to keeping development effectiveness central to the DAX work to make it revitalized and relevant to 2019 and the years ahead. And lastly, but by no means least, we will never forget that development effectiveness is for the poorest of the world and particularly for women and girls because they indeed are the champions. Thank you. Thank you, Susanna Moorhead. And I'm now going to give the mic back to, to our MC, but first I'd like, I'd like you all to, to really give her a round of applause because uh, she has been a wonderful and she has given energy to the Zoom and uh, she has connected with our substance here, which is not always the case for moderators. Well, well done. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. It has been a pleasure and an honor to, to be with you all over these past uh, one and a half days. And now it is my pleasure to introduce our final speaker for the day who's going to give us closing remarks. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Parliamentary State Secretary Norbert Bartel of Germany. A warm round of applause as he comes up, please. Thank you. Oh, from there? Thank you. So, thank you, Julie. Excellencies, <coughs> Excellencies fellow co chairs and steering committee members, ladies and gentlemen, now we are concluding the first senior level meeting of the Global Partnership. We made a point of combining the completion of our joint work program with the United Nations High Level Political Forum. And I think this is a very important signal because the effectiveness debate is really about the same issue as the HLPF, making development policy more effective for people and creating more efficiency in our fight against poverty, hunger and climate change. Over the last two days, we have focused on progress and challenges with regard to implementing the effectiveness principles. Our SLM was a real peer learning event, a dialogue with all stakeholders across regions and sectors. And I'm convinced that we will all go home with many new insights on how we can further improve our cooperation and how we can make development for all more effective and sustainable. Ladies and gentlemen, now that the senior level meeting and our joint work program are drawing to a close, and my time as a co-chair of the Global Partnership is also nearing its end, I would like to sincerely thank my colleagues, the co-chairs from Bangladesh and Uganda and from Reality of Aid Africa. And I want to thank the members of the steering committee and of the joint support team for our excellent cooperation. And on a more personal note, I would like to thank my German team, Martina Metz and uh, Udo Weber, for their untiring work over the last 30 months, their support, their incredible commitment, and their readiness to always go the proverbial extra mile have contributed a lot to the success story we have written over these two and a half years. I am sure that the new co-chairs and the new members of the steering committee, together with those 
who are continuing their work in the next phase, will provide very active and constructive support and inspiring input to the future work of the Global Partnership. Looking back, we find that we have made substantial progress together, thanks to our good cooperation in the working groups for the implementation of the strategic priorities in the work program, we were able to achieve important milestones for the Global Partnership. Our joint co-chair statement has outlined these achievements. The work of the past few years have shown that realizing the effectiveness agenda is a key element for sustainable global development. The question of how we can implement development processes in a results-oriented way and with the greatest possible effectiveness is crucial for the success of these processes. Let me underline one thing again. We can only reach our global goals through the joint efforts of all stakeholders. So it's a great achievement for our work and for the global partnership to have a non-governmental co-chair to strengthen the co-chair level. As a co-chair, we have also worked for more engagement with the private sector. One visible result of our intensive and constructive dialogue with business representatives, unions, governments and civil society has been the establishment of the Business Leaders Caucus and the adoption of the Kampala principles for effective cooperation with the private sector. For Germany, it's also, it also has been especially important to gain specific insights into the preconditions and challenges for effective cooperation in practice on country level. We have put these insights in a global compendium of good practices. Yesterday and today, we looked at what we have achieved, but also at the future course of the global partnership. The findings of the latest monitoring effort, but also our dialogue as at the SLM, have shown that we are still facing great challenges despite all our achievements, both with regard to implementation and with regard to the inclusion of all stakeholders that are important for development processes. We must keep adjusting our responses to current challenges at the national and global levels. Excellencies, distinguished colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, the effectiveness principles that we agreed in Busan are still as important as they were then. Even in fast-moving times, we must not neglect the questions of how to design our cooperation and how to ensure good quality of our cooperation. Otherwise, we would be wasting resources that are urgently needed. Together, we have a responsibility to keep our good and constructive cooperation alive and to take our successes further. In this spirit, Germany will continue to actively support the global partnership. Now, it is a special moment for me to say farewell to you as the co-chair for the group of DAC countries. My very best wishes to my successor, Ambassador Thomas Gass, and to the whole co-chair team. All the best to all of you for your future work. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very, very much. As we close, ladies and gentlemen, another warm round of applause for all the co-chairs, outgoing, continuing, and incoming. Thank you. A very big thank you to OECD and UNDP for supporting this meeting. Can we give them a round of applause, please? And to each of us in the room, Whatever constituency you represent, whatever institution you come from, we need to leave here keeping in mind that we have a responsibility. We carry a burden on our shoulders. We must keep the promises that we have made. We must carry the message back home to our countries. 
We must look to participate and to partner effectively. We must act. And this is a responsibility we have to really transform the lives of the most vulnerable. There was an old saying that told us, you learn how to cut a tree by cutting a tree. But I don't like to share that anymore because we don't want to cut trees. So ladies and gentlemen, you learn how to plant a tree by planting a tree. Please go plant. My final word is that all the messages we have shared will go in and efficiently be spread across the high-level political forum. So they will be discussed at length. And so I want you to take that knowledge with you, even as we go away to enjoy a Sunday afternoon in New York City. Thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure. All the best. Thank you.